September 18th, Muscatine Community School District Board Meeting. Madam Secretary, would you uh, take roll and determine a quorum for us? Sure. Director Bauer? Here. DeBeat? Here. Drava? Here. Finn? Here. Mather? Here. Neighbor? Here. Wildermuth? Here. A quorum is present. Thank you. Would you please uh, stand and join me for the pledge? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome all of our visitors and our media representatives. We appreciate you being here uh, this evening. We have a little bit of tonight's meeting. It'll be a little bit unique in that we will start our meeting with the retiring board and then we will step into a second meeting. So if it feels a little bit um, out of pace, that is, that's why. This is a reorganization uh, time for us. So the first thing that we have on our agenda is a public hearing for the proposed plans, specification, proposed form of contract and estimated cost of the said improvements for the Muscatine High School Physical Education Facility. Um, for those of you that either grabbed a copy of the agenda or board members, that's on um, page three of your agenda. And the first thing we need to do is to have a public hearing. So I would entertain a motion. I'm, I'll move to call the public hearing for the proposed plans for specifications, proposed form of contract, and the estimated cost of said improvements to the physical um, education facility to be opened. Okay. Second that. It's been moved and seconded to have the, uh, to open up for a public hearing. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Madam Secretary, would you do a roll call vote for us? Director Bauer? Aye. DeBeat? Aye. Drava? Aye. Finn? Aye. Mather? Aye. Neighbor? Aye. Wildermuth? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. So we are now in a public hearing. Have we received any written or oral comments? We have not. Okay. And do we have anyone from the audience that would like to provide any comments? And seeing that no one is moving. Well, I move to uh, close the public hearing. Okay. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to close the public hearing. Is there any discussion before I ask for a roll call vote? Madam Secretary? Uh, Director Bauer? Aye. DeBeat? Aye. Drava? Aye. Finn? Aye. Mather? Aye. Neighbor? Aye. Wildermuth? Aye. Motion passed. Thank you. Next on our agenda is our citizens speak portion of the agenda. This is the time if there's anyone in the audience that would like to address the board, you are welcome to do so. We would ask that you approach the podium and state your name and address for the record. We also ask that you limit your comments to three minutes. Um, and to be aware that per our policy, we are not able as a board to respond to your comments. We are happy to hear them, but we're not able to respond to them in this particular format. And the audience stays quiet again. All right, so it doesn't look like we have anyone for citizen speak. I do see, though, three bright, smiling faces that look like they might be ready to give us a student council update. All right, well, if you would step to the podium, <coughs> we're anxious to hear your update. Okay, um, hello, my name is Tom Rainier. I'm a junior MHS. Um, I've been to student council for one year now. Well, going, this is my first year. Um, homecoming week has already kicked off and it was very successful. Um, the theme was Hollywood and I think it was a great success. I really do. Um, the overall goal was raising money and awareness to fight childhood cancer and it went very well. So I'm going to pass it off to uh, Tess. Hi, I'm Tess Rombuler. This is my third year on student council. Last week's Monday night powder puff game girls football. Uh, we had $1,358 raised for cancer, childhood cancer. Um, the seniors won. The parade and coronation were very successful. There was a lot of community involvement. There was around 30 floats in the parade from around the community. 
Um, and there were donations taken for uh, Cancer Connection, which is the Childhood Cancer Program during the coronation. Um, Senior March was also a really good success. There were over 180 students attending. Hi everyone, my name is Saul Ocampo. This is my third year in student council now and I'm a senior at MHS. Uh, so yeah, homecoming was an incredible success. Uh, overall, we raised four th over $4,000 for uh, varying cancer uh, charities and organizations throughout the country and throughout Muscatine as well. Um, and that includes proceeds from the Powder Puff game, like Tess mentioned, coronation and the football game on Friday night. Uh, and the dance itself, the homecoming dance, was this past Saturday, and that was a huge success, success as well. Uh, we sold over a thousand tickets, which was, I think, one of our most successful dances to date. Uh, and at ten dollars each ticket, that's uh, ten thousand dollars in profit for a student council, which is awesome, and I'm sure will put it to great use. So, any questions that anyone has here, um, at all? Okay, everyone's quiet again. Thank you. Tom, Tess, and Saul, thank you so much for your um, efforts. It sounds like a very, very successful week. And for the parts I got to see, it was a lot of fun. So thank you for your work. Next on our agenda is the consent portion of the agenda. The following items are considered to be routine by the Board of Education and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless the director so requests in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence of events. Those items are the approval of the minutes of the August 10th work session and the August 14th regular meeting and the approval of bills and claims. What are the wishes of the board? Move to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? And the motion carries. The next item on our agenda is to review and approve the acceptance of the official report of votes from the Muscatine County Auditor's Office. What are the wishes of the board? I move to accept the report uh, from the Auditor's Office. I'll second. You all made me nervous there for just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's been moved and seconded to approve the um, acceptance of the official report of votes from the Muscatine County, uh, Muscatine County Auditor's Office. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? And the motion carries. The next item that we have on our agenda is the third and final reading on policies. So these policies have been before the board two other times, um, and as we are required by another policy, we review them three times. Some of these are to be, um, the action is to delete the policy, and the deletion is not because the policy is not important, it's because it's covered somewhere else under another policy, it was a duplication. So through a, a thorough review, that is, how, um, that is how we got to a few deletions. So I'm gonna read this list, so that if you're listening at home, you'll know what we're approving. Uh, 600.2 is a school calendar. 600.3 is the school year. 600.4 is scheduling activities. 600.5, con conditions of instruction. 600.6 is class size, and that's a deletion. 601.2, curriculum adoption and evaluation. 601.3, basic instructional program for kindergarten, that's a recommended deletion. 601.4, elementary curriculum, deletion. 601.5, middle school curriculum, deletion. 601.6, high school curriculum, deletion. 601.7, talented and gifted. 601.8, summer school. 601.9, health education. 601.10, physical education. 601.13, career education. 601.18, teaching about religion. 601.21, alt alternative programs, deletion. 601.23, special education programs and services. 601.26, student health services. 601.30, virtual online courses, deletion. 
601.32, school ceremonies and observances. That's a brand new policy. 601.33, animals in the classroom, new policy. 601.34, student production of materials and services, new policy. 602.1, selection of instructional materials, deletion. 603.1, student testing program. 603.2, progress report to students, deletion. 603.3, permanent records, deletion. 603.4, accountability test in integrity slash test preparation, deletion. What are the wishes of the board? I'll move to approve all the policies in question. In question. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded to approve uh, all policies as listed in the third and final reading in tonight's board book. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? <clears throat> and the motion carries. The last item that we have falls under our board target of Muscatine schools will utilize resources effectively and equitably, equitably, easy for me to say. That takes us to the review of the June 30 financials. And Tom, okay. I think you're going to lead us in that. Sure will. No problem. So September 15th was a big day for school finance and we had our certified annual report was due, our special education supplement and our transportation report was due last Friday. So what is being presented to you tonight is the <clears throat> CAR portion, some selected reports that I pulled out to show you, um, kind of give you the final unofficial results of 2016-17 and <clears throat> Uh, our school district audit for FY17 is scheduled for October 26th, 27th, and October 30th. So um, one last time we'll be bringing 2017 and that will be after the audit is released sometime in December. So the first document on page 53 of your board book is uh, <clears throat> what is called the treasurer's report and I would really consider it kind of our fund, ba fund balance report. If remember, um, in all the funds except 10 uh, general fund and enterprise fund, it's pretty much a cash basis. So the general fund ended with a 13.6 million fund balance. So that's not spending authority, remember, and I'm gonna to touch on that in, a, in another slide. So we increased from 11, and I did on most of these present kind of what, how FY16 ended so you can get kind of a comparison. So we increased in the general fund from 11.8 to 13.6. Obviously, we spent less this last fiscal year than our reven than um, what our revenues were, which is always good. And the other thing I'll point out is our enterprise fund, which is our school nutrition fund. Uh, it does have a positive the balance in the black there. I know we've been working out of several years of spending more than what we were taking in in the enterprise fund. And also, if you remember, that is the fund where we have to make some required GASB entries for IPERS and for other post-employee employment benefits. So the beginning fund balance of minus 75,000 is kind of misleading because of those entries, but we did end up with a positive balance in nutrition and about, oh, um, Around 900,000 of that is unreserved, undesignated, and the rest would uh, reducing that 900,000 is because of IPERS and, and uh, OPEB. So I'll go on to the next page, page 54 of the board book, is uh, the summary of our balance sheets for all of our funds. Uh, if you notice there, it's just... Uh, what I've highlighted is our current assets on line nine, current liabilities on line 26, and our ending fund balance on line 41. And I'll point out that in the general fund, the 13.6 million that I, I showed you on the first page, 1.1 uh, million of that is restricted. And the difference there being their state categorical monies that we get that we, if we don't spend them all, we have to restrict them and use them 
going forward, such things as teacher quality money, Iowa core money, statewide voluntary preschool, those, those are examples of those restricted funds. So that figure is down a little bit from the prior fiscal year, so. Then I'll move on to uh, page 56 of the board book, and that's a document called a budget crosswalk. And basically what that is, it's highlighting revenues on line 16, total resources on line 22, total expenditures by fund on line 35, and then the ending fund balance, which you know ties back to that first page there. So um, <clears throat> then I'm going to move on to slide or uh, page number 58. And so now we'll get into two pages of our financial indicators. The first one being our solvency ratio. And our target is five to 15%. And my, S, my figure is 22.5%. So we're obviously on, in a good position. Uh, a lot of that is due to the cash reserve levies that we've put into uh, the last several years. And if you remember for fiscal 18, we had to just scale that down quite a bit because there is a statutory limit on cash reserve and we have met that. And so we won't see that in our revenue because cash reserves come to us you know, as revenue, property taxes, but it doesn't affect our spending authority. And a lot of other things could um, affect our solvency ratio. You know, what, what happens at the state level could affect that but we are in a fairly good position on that financial indicator. Page 59 is our unspent uh, authorized budget, our unspent budget authority. You also hear UAB, unspent authorized budget, means the same thing. Unspent balance means the same thing. So this is just uh, FY17 and three prior years comparisons of where we're ending up our target is five to 15% and, and we're at the high end, so we're at right at 15%, so. And it's just something to monitor because, you know, we don't wanna increase by that amount every year because then we're not spending the authority we're generating for that fiscal year, so it's just something that uh, I've talked to the administrative people about and so we'll, um, it's a good thing to, be at 15%, but anything higher, you know, it's not recommended to be up in the 25% range. And um, so. Um, where does that, the incremental um, that we get because of the declining enrollment, the one time incremental? Okay, so the, bud the budget guarantee. Yeah, does that play a role into this at all? And does that put us higher than we would be if we didn't have that? Yeah, in the unspent authorized budget area, because we're, the budget guarantee comes to play in that formula. What would it be if we didn't have oh boy. one? I wouldn't be able to tell you right off the top of my head, but I would be glad to get that to you. That was like a million and something? Um, yeah, I'm not, I can't remember what it okay. was this year. I'd just be interested to know what it, what it would be without that. Sure. So the budget guarantee, where, where would we be if we didn't do the budget guarantee? If we didn't get the one year, no. you know. Okay. And the last slide, page 60, and this is just the document that, um, well, here it's gonna show you what that amount is on this last slide there, Aaron, on page 60. So the regular program budget adjustment is 614,000 for FY17. So we wouldn't have, so you basically- So would be 614? Yeah, 614,000 was for FY17. So take that in the, on the formula our maximum authorized budget mm -hmm. uh, minus total expenditures Line divided two. by the maximum authorized budget. So we would just, that would be lower by 614,000. So um, I'm gonna point out just a couple more things in the yellow. Those are the things we can control. And those are additional spending authority that we're getting. So the 769,983 is for LEP. 
So limited English proficient students, ES means the same as ESL, English is a second language. So we get additional authority if we spend beyond what we are given for that additional weighting. And so at the end of fiscal 15, we're gonna add another 555,000. So that's included in that 769. That's authority, that's not right. dollars. Correct. And then I will point out on line 19, uh, special education did have a positive balance this year. Um, many factors go into that. I, I did try to go back to at least 2006 and we have not had a positive balance in Muscatine. I'm not sure prior to FY06. So, you know, I'm gonna point out Medicaid and I'm, if you're not familiar with what Medicaid claiming is, basically we go through a process of claiming Medicaid for students that are eligible that we provide services for, not health, uh, uh, educational services to students with health IEPs or behavior IEPs. So basically, and this is, you've probably heard about Medicaid at maybe ISB convention or something, but we do claim quite a few dollars and we're just getting federal dollars to replace the state dollars basically because we get federal money, we, we incur the expense, instead of using state dollars, we're, we're claiming so that we can get federal dollars to replace that. So a lot of times Medicaid claiming districts that have a large un, uh, negative balances for special ed use Medicaid claiming to kind of dig themselves out of that negative balance. In our district, we've been fortunate that we haven't had to use Medicaid claiming for that. So we're kind of using Medicaid as getting federal dollars to replace state dollars. So we will have to be sending some of those state dollars back by about $135,000. So don't be alarmed that we're <coughs> losing spending authority. We're getting, we're just increasing our miscellaneous income. So that figure in yellow, 4.3 million kind of adjusts itself out. So. Um, do you think we'll get a thank you from uh, yeah, the, I'm the pretty state sure not. That? No? Okay. Yeah. Tom, so, do you anticipate the MCOs having any impact on those numbers? The who? The uh, managed care organizations regulating the states. I, I wouldn't know. I Another, wouldn't be able to answer intelligently about okay. that. Sorry. Another question I have, I'm looking at the, the Pebble Fund year end and uh, beginning balance. And I know in 2016, we went up uh, just under a million dollars and now we're down 700,000. Is that primarily due to the, the, Jeff the final Jefferson payments? Okay, so it might be due to a change in finance directors because really all of our capital projects could- Saying Gene walked out with 700 grand? No, yet. no, no, I'm sorry. There was a bonus. Classifying <laughs> where you take, cap uh, let me rephrase that. So classifying where we code capital expenditures out of one fund or the other because they're both really can be used for the same purpose so a lot of it has to do with Jefferson and I kind of like to when we give reports we give reports on total capital projects we don't really separate mm -hmm. out PEPL versus SAVE sure. so that is a large Jefferson is a, is a big reason why our overall capital projects numbers are what they are. So the the 3.2 million jump and save somewhat or actually more than offsets that that pebble decline. So are yeah. we, what are we looking at projecting in terms of uh, change in the coming year on the both the pebble and the, on well, the save funds? I don't have the forecast in front of me but I know you know anticipating the expenditures you know we're gonna have at least two million or so probably for this PE project, I think that's what the estimate was. One of those ones that Bill gonna come do? One I, of know we'll, I know we'll pay that in, in, in tranches, but when are those yeah. going to be coming out this fiscal year? It's probably, I'm guessing it's going to be over more, this year and next year, probably majority right. of it next year. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Done this year, it'll be done this year, right? It'll be done this year, it'll be paid out of this year's. So. It'll be, it'll be paid out yeah. this year's. 
I don't know. It'll be it'll be done. Construction timeline. So. Be, sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. So. That's it. Any other questions for Tom? Thank you. Another yep. good year. Yeah. Thank yep. you. Always see what we got to deal with this fall. Yep. <laughs> Well, the good news is we have some capacity to weather some things. Yes, exactly. That's where we want to be. So at this time, I would entertain a motion. We will have an adjournment of our retiring board. We will then step into a new meeting with the new board. And before we have that adjournment, I would just like to thank Randy Neighbor one more time for his years of service and dedication, both as an educator and time on the board. Well, thank you. I certainly have learned a ton <laughs> from you. So I, I appreciate you sharing your time and knowledge and efforts with all of us. Thank you. And I'd move to adjourn the retiring board. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a second? I second? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And the motion, and opposed? And the motion carries. I think he slow pushed that off. Come on, slow clap. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. You're welcome. Thank you. We'll do a short transition. You're worse than a landlord. <laughs> are you? Uh, are you still going to bring us dip and stuff? <laughs> Munchies? Maybe. That was part of the deal. <laughs> His Monday nights are free now. One of those work sessions that <laughs> when you don't have any better. I'll make sure there's some gluten free. Thank you. There you go. There you, thank you. <laughs> so when you're pushing snow while we're meeting, you just come right up the hill. All right. <laughs> we'll be there for you. Thanks, thank Randy. You, Randy. Thanks, Randy. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Randy. So as Randy leaves. We welcome our newest board member, Toby McCarter. And you don't get to pick uh, where you get to sit tonight. That's Already. your only option <laughs> right now. Actually, so. you don't get to pick any night. Lisa <laughs> well, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa will assign your Lisa will assign your seat. Unless but. you get here before me. Or Jeff. There you go. There you go. So Toby, welcome. We're glad to have you here. Thanks for having me. I am now going to turn over um, our meeting of our new board to our Madam Secretary who will run some of the official pieces that we need to get done. Great. Good evening. I now call the organizational and annual meeting to order and our first agenda, agenda item would be the administration of the oath of office to our newly elected board members. So if I could have Tim, Tammy and Toby stand up. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Iowa, and that you will faithfully and impartially, to the best of your ability, discharge the duties of the Office of Board Member in the Muscatine Community School District as now and hereafter re required by law? I do. I do. Great. Welcome and congratulations. All right. Thank you. So the next order of business is to elect the Board President and Vice President. Um, I will ask for nominations for Board President. A second is not required. If there is only one nomination, we will need a motion and a second to cast a, a unanimous vote for board president. If there are more, um, more nominations, we need a motion that nominations cease with a second and that ballots be cast. I will then administer the oath of office to the board president and turn the meeting over to the president for the election of the vice president. The process for electing the vice president is the same. The president or myself will then administer the oath of office to the vice president. So I now open the floor for nominations for board president. I'd like to move to nominate Tammy Droba for the president. I move that my nomination cease. I'll need a second. Second. Sec Okay, so a motion was made by Mary and seconded by Nathan that nominations see, um, cease. So then, um, let's see, where's my notes? Um, okay, so then I need a motion and a second to cast a unanimous vote for Tammy as board president. I'll move to cast a unanimous vote for Tammy Drawball as board president. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. 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 
Opposed, nay. Motion passed. Congratulations, Tammy. Thank you. So I will now administer the oath of office for the board president. Do I understand? <clears throat> Do you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Iowa, and that you will faithfully and impartially, to the best of your ability, discharge the duties of the Office of Board President in the Muscatine Community School District as now and hereafter required by law? I will. Congratulations. I turn the meeting over to you. The test to see if I can do the second part and if I was listening carefully to follow directions. I'll help. All right. So I would now entertain uh, a nomination for vice president. I'd like to nominate Mary Wildermuth. Move to close. Is there a second? A second. So it has been uh, moved and seconded to nominate Mary Wildermuth to the office of vice president. I believe then I need a motion, a second motion, to cast a unanimous ballot. I move to cast a unanimous. Okay. So it's been moved. Is there a second? A second. It's been moved and seconded to then cast a unanimous ballot for Vice President as Mary Wildermuth. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? And the motion carries. Do you want me to Thank do you. the oath or do you? I'll do the oath. Okay. Can we stand up and look that? at each other? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a piece of paper. Okay. Well, I'm like script. No. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a test? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mary, do you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Iowa and that you will faithfully and impartially, to the very best of your ability, discharge the duties of the office of board uh, vice president in the Muscatine Community School District as now and hereafter required by law. I do. Congratulations. Let me see. Thank you. I'm glad that was big print. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So next on our agenda, Madam Secretary, thank you very much for that. Um, <coughs> next on our agenda, so again, this portion of our meeting, um, it is our annual meeting. It is our reorganization of the board. We will, well, there are several pieces of business that we transact each year. So the next item, we can do this individually if um, board members would like, or we can do this all in one motion. So I'm gonna read through what the items are and board members can decide how you would like to handle this. So our next piece of business is to appoint Lisa mosier Bunn as our board secretary, appoint Tom Anderson as our board treasurer, Designate First National Bank, CBI Bank and Trust, formerly Central State Bank, and Community Bank, all of Muscatine as official depositories of district funds in the amount of $20 million each. Appoint Stanley, Landy, and Hunter, Allers, Law Firm, and Lynch Dallas PC as councils to represent the school district in legal manners on a, timely, on a time basis. Designate the Muscatine Journal as publication of record designate Bonesack and Frommelt as auditor of record, approve the statement of the board's review and support that includes discipline policies. It also includes the co-curricular and extracurricular programs, the, board, uh, the board's annual review and the approval of the district's discipline policies and their support for co-curricular and extracurricular activities and to appoint the district compliance officers, and those are listed on page 67 of your board book. What are the wishes of the board? I move to appoint, or designate, and approve items 4A through H. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded to approve items A through H, the long list that I just read, as presented. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all of those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed? And motion carries. The next item on our agenda is the organization of the board. So there's a, um, the first item is the board meeting schedule, which is for 2017-18 year, and that is on page 68 of your board book. 
Jerry, do you have any comments that you need to add, uh, would like to add <coughs> to well, uh, that? Well, just that uh, uh, the um, the work sessions we're we're going to move around to different buildings, and that way uh, board members will get a chance to uh, see some some places maybe they haven't been in for a while, um, and we will. Um, uh, also try uh, uh, to highlight specific programs uh, for that night uh, for the board. So glad to see uh, I think it'll be a it'll be a um, it'll be good for us to to be out there and, and get in those other buildings. I agree, and it is it is it's a great chance to see the building. So those are all listed, the date, the time, um, if it's a regular meeting and or if it's a work session. Those are listed, and then the location as well. The only exception on the two and the second and the fourth is just the May, I'm sorry, March 5th meeting, which is due to spring break, correct? Yeah. Correct. Correct. So we traditionally meet on the second Monday of each month. That will bump up. That was easier than trying to move around spring break. Not that we would try and move around spring break. All right. Any other um, questions or comments on the board meeting schedule? Our next item of action are board assignments, and we have various roles each year that the board members have an opportunity to take part in if they so desire. Um, each one comes with a little bit of um, homework and additional responsibility. The first item that we have listed is the Iowa Association of School Boards delegate assignments. ISBA by um, law give us members uh, of the school district a delegate who casts the district's votes on issues before the delegate assembly. School boards provide input on IASB's legislative platform and our priorities help influence the legislators and the governor. The annual meeting of the corporate and delegate assembly will be held at 9 a.m. and it's Wednesday, November 15th at the Iowa Event Center in Des Moines. That is part of the of Iowa's uh, the um, Iowa Association of School Boards yearly conference as well. This is something um, in the past. I've done it. Um, Tim's done it. Nathan, have you been a delegate I think before? It was an alternate one year. Okay, so there are several of us that have um, done this. What are the wishes of the board? I'll make a motion to have Tammy Drawbaugh be their delegate representative. Is there a second? I second that. So it's been moved and seconded to have uh, Tammy Drabaugh take that role, and I'm happy to do that. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? And the motion carries. The next item that we have on our agenda is the appointment to the County Conference Board. Tim, maybe you can give us, you've done this um, a couple of different times. Maybe can you give a little sneak peek, a uh, preview on what that entails? Basically, it's uh, two meetings per year. There are some subcommittees, which um, I've been on for wage establishment and so forth for the county. Um, but you're reviewing the county assessor's budget and approving it uh, for that activity with uh, the school boards of, this, of the county and the um, mayors of the county and the county supervisors. What are the wishes of the board on this particular item? I'd like to nominate John DeBeat. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved and seconded to nominate John DeBeat for this role. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Congratulations, John. Thank you. The next item that we uh, need to tackle is the appointment of the Ag Learning Center Board. Tim, I think you hold this current I do. role uh, with the opportunity to attend 7 a.m. meetings or something, some really early hour. Exactly. Uh, once a month, roughly, Jerry and I meet together for coffee and nobody brings the donuts. No. <laughs> um, it's 7 a.m. at the Ag Learning Center uh, with uh, Jerry. I represent the school district with Jerry. Um, there's other rec uh, representatives from the businesses community, uh, friends of FFA, and then our ag instructors are also present, uh, not voting uh, representatives. Uh, I've also done that for a few years, and I am currently the treasurer, I think, in my third year. I believe so, yes. Doing that. 
lost time. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but, and I am willing to do that again if the board chooses. I'll nominate Tim. I second that. It's been moved and seconded to nominate Tim to the role of, to continue the role of the Ag Learning Center. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? And the motion carries. Congratulations. You. Maybe you'll need to bring the donuts this year. This time <laughs> I'm going to vote Jerry to do that. Yeah. <laughs> there, was second, there was no second on that. There's no second on that. Yeah. It's just automatic. I need some carrots. <laughs> carrots and there celery. you go. Healthy food. That does be not better. sound near as much fun as donuts. Since I can't eat the donuts anyway. So. <laughs> Next on our agenda is the consent agenda. So, again, since we're into a new meeting, we have a new piece of consent agenda that you, if you're following along, uh, the following items are considered to be routine by the Board of Education and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a director so requests, in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence from the agenda. Those items include student teaching agreements, driver's ed agreement with the area, uh, AEA, policies, district committees, and personnel recommendations. What are the wishes of the board? I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there any other discussion? I would just uh, inform the board that uh, the driver's ed costs have uh, did not increase this year, and I think it's maybe the second or third year now that they've they've held static. So that's a oh. that's a good thing. It is a good thing. Told Tom that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? And the motion carries. That takes us all the way to approve the collective bargaining agreement between the Muscatine Community School District and the local 1560. Council of AFSME for the Secretarial, Secretarial Clerical Aid and Paraeducator and Bus Driver Units. Jerry, do you have any information, sure. additional yeah. information that we need on this? The, uh, the, this was the first uh, negotiations with the new collective bargaining um, law. Um, and uh, we, it, did, it did take quite a while in that uh, uh, we had to go through PERB to get a ruling that the permissive items were not required negotiations, which is what slowed things down a, a, a little bit. Uh, but we uh, finally got that ruling, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, settlement uh, was uh, what was allowed under statute, and uh, it was approved by the uh, union folks, and uh, it is where we expected to wind up uh, with the negotiations. It's just one year, right? Just one year, and um, we are in the process of, and when I say we, Jill is really working on this, uh, that we're working on a uh, uh, handbook to replace the guidelines that the um, contract had, because you, you still need to have um, processes in place for employees, and uh, other than um, uh, uh, a few things in the, uh, in the hiring process, uh, most of those things, um, will, most of our employees will not see significant changes. Um, so, Jerry, these four pages are the entirety of the CBAs for both bargaining units. I'm sorry, what? The these four pages in the packet. That's the entirety of the CBAs for Correct. both bargaining units. Correct. Yes. Great. Thank you. Yes. Wow. I'll make a motion to approve the collective bargaining agreement between Mustang Community School District and local. 1560 as presented. I second that. It's been moved and seconded to approve the collective bargaining agreement as presented. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Motion carries. Next on the agenda is to approve the proposed plans, specification, proposed form of contract, and other estimated cost of said improve improvements for the MHS Physical Education Facility. 
and I'm guessing that Tyler is going to share some information with us. So. Accompanied with Jeff Miller. Jeff is really the technology person here, I would guess. To... <laughs> Jeff, how do I plug this in? <laughs> <laughs> you need power, I can unplug. No, 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 I'm good. Let's just see if we can wake the TV up enough. And this worked before the meeting, so of course it won't work now. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at that. There, there we go. Okay. okay, so this is an aerial um, part of the plan. Uh, I submitted the plans last week to Lisa, so I believe that you got to see it all and read it all and r know everything about the project. But to give everybody who's not familiar um, with the project a little bit of a glimpse of what we're talking about, uh, this is on the northeast side of the high school. Uh, you have the football practice field off to the right in the northeast quadrant here of the image. Tennis courts are in the southeast or the bottom right-hand corner of the image. And our project is going right here in this grassy field area right now. Uh, this image obviously is an aerial that is a little outdated. Um, Google and other entities don't always have the best information because you do have a building out there that is curr currently there and then we're gonna have to build around. The, for the intent of the survey that was performed uh, by a local company, this gave us the information that we need in terms of topography and utilities and that's what really what this plan right here is really about. Moving on to... Tyler, I'm sorry, can you go back and I just... Can. Um, in case we're not 100% sure, uh -huh. can you point out where the current building that we're going to need to build around sits? That little footprint... Perfect, right, okay. It's right there, called maintenance building. So you can see the outline of the building. Mm -hmm. So they did survey the building, it shows it on the plan, and we, we know what the dimensions of, the, of that building are. Okay. Thank you. You just don't get to see the roof and the aerial is all. So building upon that, our new building, which is this white rectangle that you're seeing, uh, the gray around it represents the new concrete that will go around the building. That existing building is right here again for reference. So we're building pretty tight to that building. Uh, and because of the nature of the utilities um, that we have to get to the new building, we're actually going to end up taking out all the concrete that leads to your existing building. Um, previously, we were hoping to leave it in place, um, work around it, but as the building grew a little bit and knowing what the utilities were doing, uh, we didn't want to do a cut and patch kind of element on the existing drive. Um, if it was just a simple utility crossing, no big deal, we would go ahead and cut and patch it. But the grades of the site really created a situation where that driveway is actually sloping to the southwest. And if we were to build the building where we have it, all the water off the driveway and off the grass would be, we'd be coming to the new building. We don't want that. So we're actually gonna twist and, and warp the existing drive by replacing it, warping it out so it goes more to the direct north. Uh, and at the, on the site, you'll see we'll be putting in this storm intake, this little round dot here. Uh, that's going to capture all the water that's coming off the drive and in the grassy area to the northeast of it. So we are not having water come to, mm -hmm. towards the new building. We're trying to capture it and divert it before it gets there. Uh, out front, we do have four new parking stalls. Um, these are all marked as handicap accessible stalls, pretty much for kind of after hours activities at the football stadium or at this facility um, when it's in use on weekends and nights. We will have an exterior um, sloped walkway. It is not a ramp. Um, because of the grades, the floor level of this building will be raised up a couple of feet compared to what the ground is right now. Um, and that's just the nature of, again, keeping the water out of the building. Uh, right now, all that water really sheds across this entire site all the way to this corner, which, let me zoom out just a little bit. Um, so kind of this goes back to the maintenance shops area this is the road um, along the high school. So right now all that water is shedding across this building site right to this corner. So we had to raise the building up to divert the water away from the building and get it out of there. So we have raised it up. We've sloped the sidewalk. It's not a handicap ramp. Um, we do have a handrail, but it's really just more so people aren't stepping off the edge of this raised sidewalk uh, onto the street. Any questions yet? The sidewalk's wide enough for a wheelchair, though, correct? Yes, yeah. It's six, <clears throat> meets the... excuse me, it's six foot um, across the sidewalk. Other than this back sidewalk, we have it as 10 foot. 
um, based on comments with the band coming through this general area to the turf field, we've made it wider so that if you had a gator or golf cart, those kind of things, you could drive it along the sidewalk um, and not be driving it on the grass and rutting out the grass. Mm, good. So where is the railing on the street side? Where, sorry, what was that? The railing, where's the railing on the street so side? So the railing, so kind of this is a, essentially a wall here. It's, it only sticks up above the sidewalk a few inches and then we have a railing on top of that. And it's only because the building is raised up a couple of feet, we need to raise it up above this, the level of the street. We don't want to have a sidewalk with a step off where somebody could, if they're not paying attention, kids are messing around going to PE class, and they're not paying attention, step off and hurt themselves. So the railing is really there um, just so that they're not stepping off this kind of curb wall area. And so you'd enter either to the left of that? Correct, left or to the right, correct. As we progress towards the, this south end, the ground gets higher and higher, so this sidewalk is, isn't as severe, and so we can handle that with a curb line. It's really the lower corner down here in this, this corner that's the, the lowest point, so we had to build up beyond that. But there won't be railing going all the way to the corner, correct? Correct, that's correct. We're only doing it where we're concerned that there's, so more, of a cur there's more than a curb drop off. We wanna protect people from accidentally oh, walking so off go, that. It'll go lower there in that corner too. Right. And those are a bunch of details that everybody loves to see. Main floor plan. Um, so what, what I'll do quickly, so all the kids are entering this door right here. Um, there's, we have a larger vestibule here. This vestibule has walk-off carpet tile in it so that we, we try to knock off as much dirt and grime off their shoes as we can. Um, and then the coaches can either use, go to the left to the weight room or go to the right to the um, gymnasium area. Restrooms are directly ahead of them. And overview quickly, the center gut right here are storage rooms. Um, this one's accessible off the basketball courts. This one is accessible both from both rooms, the weight room and the gymnasium side. We do have a bypass door through here. And make sure, hopefully everybody can see that okay. We do have a bypass door here so you can go from the gymnasium to the weight room and back. Uh, and then we have a trainer's room so that any athlete out here in this facility um, or at the football facility, track facility, if anybody's injured, the trainer who's currently in the high school can actually be out here, and this is more likely where she's gonna be residing, assuming it's the same person. We have a small office and then we have a training room, similar to what we originally had designed in the original gym entrance. We're moving it out here because through discussions, she said she spends like 90% of her time out here, more at these athletic fields than in the high school treating, treating students. So making this accessible for for the trainer and the athletes made a lot more sense. So what we did was um, we put this all the way to the outside wall so that this door can access directly into the training room and that way students on game night, those kind of things, they can come directly into this room and be treated. The gymnasium area, we have two basketball courts uh, along with volleyball courts. Um, and then from there we have 12 different hoops so there's hoops here a little circle with a line is to represent the overhead uh, basketball hoop all of them are retractable so they all extend up into the ceiling we have gymnasium curtain divider curtain which is this nice squiggly line down the middle um, that will be retracted up into the ceiling or or put down uh, that was a big wish among the pe instructors to have that division so that they can have two different activities occurring or two different classes occurring within the same facility uh, we have drinking fountain out there along uh, within the weight room. And then in the weight room area, what we're showing uh, is on this kind of north side, we have some storefront, big large windows here, here, and then here. These all face the football stadium um, so that at night, a little bit of safety glow on, inside the weight room. You should be able to have all of the citizens be able to see into this weight room. So that way you can kind of see, hey, this is a nice athletic facility. There's weightlifting equipment in there. At the very front of this is the artificial turf area, the full length of it. Um, based on discussions, that was really a desire. The facility that um, a bunch of the instructors and coaches and some of the board members went and toured, that facility had the turf just on this distance along the narrow side of the weight room. And then it, then it overlapped onto the gymnasium court. Well. 
um, through discussions, they really needed this full length of the building to have a, as much acceleration and deceleration time for their athletes to train on. Um, from there, so that's an artificial grass turf area. From there, the remainder of this flooring in the weight room is a rubberized uh, weightlifting floor about an inch thick. And then what you are seeing um, with these lovely M's, because everybody loves this one, uh, these are each of the weightlifting stations. So this is the, the drop zone on the side where the weights are to hit. This is where the athlete stands. Um, these are all cut into the floor. And so to um, help understand the cost of the project and what may be a, a wish list item, all of these M's, including this M that's painted in the turf, these are right now listed as an alternate um, because the other facility that we looked at um, had similar things and their laser cut in logo was a little bit more intricate than, than this one is, but it was still $40,000. Hmm. That's a big chunk of money. So we felt, let's make this an alternate, then depending on how bids come in, it can be decided, is it worth it or not? Um, <coughs> so that is the building in the nutshell. Uh, we do have ground mounted rooftop units for the, the heating and air conditioning. Um, so we have two units out here for the weight room and then on the southeast side two units here for the gymnasium we have led lighting throughout um, we are not doing geothermal um, imeg who are the mechanical electrical engineers they did a life cycle cost analysis and said no nah, this doesn't make sense it doesn't pay out enough uh, in terms of recouping the cost of energy savings there's too long of a lifespan or too long of a time period to try to recoup the cost of the installation of the geothermal um, so the rooftop units make more sense. Same with solar. Solar, solar is extremely long, yeah. What's the footprint size dimensionally? Dimensionally? Roughly. Well, I can tell you exactly. I like that. 140 foot wide by, let's just round it to 190. So then exterior wise, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. You, in your packet, you saw these images. Uh, in the meantime, I was actually working on providing a little bit of color versus the hatching. Um, so what we were looking at is um, we've had conversations with pre-engineered metal buildings manufacturer, um, particularly the one that did the other facility that w several of us toured. And we can do two colors of metal panels and have no additional cost because of the square footage amount that we have of metal panels. So what we did was we worked on that, balanced it so that we wouldn't have no additional cost by using two colors. And then what we looked at was, this is the front of the building, if you will, that will face the high school. Uh, what we're looking at is doing some simple vinyl graphic um, logo on the side. This would actually be outlined in yellow, um, similar to the front entry window as you come up to the high school. Um, so this would be ringed in yellow. The logo would be ringed in yellow with the purple in the middle. So what we're looking at is trying to balance, instead of having one big massive building that's all one shade of color, using two standard grays that doesn't cost any additional dollars, um, and just breaking up the mass of the building so it kind of has an architectural sense to it. So these are just sections through the building so you can get an understanding that the weight room is over here on the right hand side and then the gymnasium is here. Of course the gymnasium we need the taller volume for volleyball, basketball, other sports. And I got 40 more pages to show you but I don't think you want to see them so I'll entertain any questions you have. Uh, and before I get let you ask a question. Um, right now, if the board takes action and approves it tonight, which I'm hoping you do, we'll issue it for construction tomorrow. We'll take bids on the 17th of October because um, you have a work session on the 23rd based on what you just approved as your meeting dates. Um, the 23rd would allow you to take action to approve the bids. We will have a pre-bid meeting for contractors who are interested in it on the 4th of October um, at the high school. And the, the, Oh, and so then the, the objective would be um, getting the site graded, get some site utility work done, hopefully get foundations in before winter hits. But talking with the pre-engineered metal building manufacturers, they're looking currently at a 12 to 16 week lead time once they get the order. They are swamped right now. That doesn't mean that they're raising costs or anything, it just means 
to get in the pipeline, it's going to be that kind of timeline. So um, if the contract's awarded, the contractor starts the shop drawing process, we could be looking at end of February, middle of March before we see a building actually getting erected. But the good thing is, is it's a pre-engineered metal building. They go up very quickly. And talking with them based on the crew that, you, the crew that wins the bid, if you have a crew that they mass with 20 people, it can be erected in a week and a half to two weeks. That's pretty fast. That's just the shell of it, remember, not everything else. They're not that fast. Um, Takes another week to do the rest? Something like that. <laughs> it's not extreme home makeover. Like it's not, <laughs> two it's weeks. not ex extreme PE <laughs> building weeks. makeover. So it's two weeks. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't take long to get the shell up. Um, the downside will be if they're getting the shell up in February or March, most likely we're going to have some frost still in the ground. And so we're going to have to let that thaw out a little bit. But the good thing is the finishes inside the building are not that extensive. A lot of it is metal framed walls. They go up pretty quickly. It's drywall that goes up pretty quickly. We have a little bit of co uh, concrete masonry units, not that much. And then it's floor slabs and finishes. So it, I don't think it'll take long. We're projecting, well, we're hoping that we can have it done by June 1st. That's what, that's what we put in the documents as substantial completion. That's what we're hoping to see a contractor say, yeah, we can do it in that timeline. So you wouldn't be pouring concrete till the spring? You wouldn't pour that this fall in case they... The slab? It. Yeah. We wouldn't want to pour the slab now if, if we can help it just because it's going to freeze up and then you have, you've got a chance of heaving at that point. Okay. And if you've got a floor slab, we don't want it to heave. No. Um, foundations, you'd have the deep foundations in terms of beyond the frost. It'd be okay if the foundations froze. That's not a big deal. They're not going to heave up. It doesn't save any time, though. But it doesn't really save any time. Um, I could see them putting, trying to get it in, though, because then if the building shows up, let's just say in the middle of February, they can erect it and start getting and then start pumping it with some temporary heat. At least that will help start thawing out the ground that's in the middle of the building. But I, again, the building will go fast. I'm not worried about that. It's just the inside we need to get the frost out. Then how do we deal with it? Okay. Well, I, go ahead. No, go ahead. Are, are there ceiling fans or any sort of ventilation? There is. Um, so let me jump. Let me jump to mechanical drawings because those are just a thrill to look at. Okay. So here we have four fans in the weight room, and then we have two fans here and here. We have uh, ducts through. We have fabric ducts, um, which are round ducts that will supply air. I think I jumped past it. Um, that will supply air throughout the facility. The ceiling fans are really just to help circulate that air so that there's some movement of air. Thank you. Yep. Well, I have a couple points here. Number one is, first of all, like the, the selection of the two shades of gray, that's fantastic. I mean, that, that's really, I mean, when you look at that, it does bring that building up mm -hmm. by using two different colors. So thanks for thinking about this. Uh, the second thing is, you know, it's, uh, it's great because it's a new addition, new building that we can add to the existing buildings. And the third point is, uh, you know, we're saving some money to hopefully move around and put it into the science labs and so yeah. on. Uh, and I don't know if there is any other questions or not, because if not, I would like to move to approve the proposed plans. So that is it. I have one quick question. Yeah, oh, go ahead. Um, the interior of the gym, um, yep. I know the school we visited had kind of a dent-free um, covering. Mm -hmm. Is it the same thing? It the is. We changed the design a little bit. That facility, um, they showed a plywood back up to the abuse-resistant drywall, which is what that layer is that if you hit it with your hand, you're not going to... That sounds more You're going to be going to the hospital. They used plywood, but then they had to have a change order because they had to make it fire-rated plywood. Mm. They didn't anticipate that. Um, and, and to no fault to them, it's just... Sometimes that's the way the, the local jurisdiction, have an authority, will say, no, it needs to be fire rated. Fire rated plywood is pretty expensive. We didn't want to go that route. So we had several conversations with some drywall installation companies, and we told them, here's what we're trying to do. And they said, you'd be better off and more economical if you just put, put a layer of standard drywall behind the abuse resistant drywall, because you're going to get the mass there. The abuse resistant is going to take the brunt of it. The second layer is just to kind of help that flex at all. So you'll still have the same abuse. Um, we are taking it up eight feet in the gymnasium. And then above that, for instance, on the tall walls inside the facility, that's the tall walls that separate the gym from the weight room, above eight feet, we're going to draw standard drywall for both layers because abuse resistant is expensive. 
There's no, we didn't see any reason to put it up above eight feet because hopefully nobody's throwing something that hard that high. We're more concerned with bodies hitting it and breaking through the drywall, um, not necessarily baseballs. Thank you. I'll second the motion. It has been moved and seconded to approve the proposed plan, specification, proposed form of contract, and other estimated costs of said improvements for the MHS physical education facility. Is there any other discussion? Two, two other questions. Number one, um, first, and maybe I'm just missing it. I didn't see a cost in that 45-page in that thing. Where is that set forth, the estimated cost? That was based on per previous discussions, yeah. so our estimated cost is $2.9 million. And the second question is, um, do you have an estimate as to energy consumption and cost for this building? Yes, that'd be in the life, life cycle cost analysis. Okay. I do not have that by memory. But it's in the big packet? It's not in your big packet. Okay. That is something we just received from IMEG last week because that's something that has to be submitted to the state to okay. show that it was analyzed. Um, but we can get you that information. Any other discussion? Well, the other the other thing I, that I think might be worthwhile for the board to hear now is that, you know that the uh, this is the the building part. We all then the the outfitting of it. Uh, we would also want to put that out for bid for equipment and you know all those kind of things. And I think Jeff has some some information about that. But we we would want to we'd want to uh, pursue that also prior to. Oh, it's mine now. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, as Jerry stated, there's basically two parts to this, uh, this plan. There's the building itself and then basically furnishing the weight room end of the building. So with that being said, I'll just go through a little bit of this. Um, the second part of this P facility is uh, that Tyler just got done talking about. We will be coming back to the board at a later date to uh, have the approval for uh, weight equipment, which uh, I can't give to you right now because number one, we haven't approved the building, but number two, I need to work with the PE department and the AD department uh, to figure out and determine what their needs are. After we do that, then I will get with PowerLift, who is a supplier of the weight equipment we have right now to help come up with some specs for the weight equipment and how it goes down. One of the, I can tell you one thing that will be in the specs for sure is whoever receives the bid or whoever bids on the specs will be required A, to move in any existing equipment we have to the new facility, B, obviously move the new equipment in and put it in place, and C, either buy or get rid of the equipment we do not need. So it's no burden on any of our folks or anything like that. Um, with that being said, we basically, when we've gone through this, this process of this building, we figured anywhere from 350 to 500,000 for weight equipment. It is expensive, which takes it to no surprise. We said this, this project would be $3.4 million and that, that would be turnkey. So with that being said, I do not have a date at this time to come back to you because depending on where they are with this building, the lead time of the weight equipment, you don't want to order it and then have no place to put it because they are not going to sit on it for us. So um, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to take them. If I had one question about sure. the current weight room, mm -hmm. are there any dollars in there to redo it at this time or will that, if we want to use that for a different purpose or whatever, that'll be. Yeah, we haven't that. discussed that because I think that's another thing that as we go down the line, Jerry, you know, we'll determine what we want to use that space for. We would, we would use um, uh, maintenance dollars that, that would, um, that we would, would to, uh, to reconvert that and we will want to use that. You know, we've looked at a, a, a dance area as a possibility. There's, all, there's, there's some other, a lot of people are lining up for space, <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm, I'm really confident we can take care of that in our regular budget. Any 
any other discussion? I'd just like to say, I think this is obviously a beautiful building. It looks very well designed. Um, my uh, original reasons for opposing it remain. I think if we have this kind of money, we'd probably be better off building a fabulous science lab. I know we've got uh, renovation scheduled for the high school, um, but I, I just think what we could do um, to really attract uh, folks from outside the district in terms of our learning uh, curriculum and, and, and that that we could provide. <coughs> so I, I remain opposed to it, but I think it's lovely, and I'm sure uh, unless uh, a drastic change of opinion occurs that it will be lovely. Any other discussion? So the motion on the floor is to approve the proposed plan specification, proposed <coughs> form of contract, and other estimated costs of said improvements for the MHS physical education facility. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed? Nay. And the motion carries. Tyler, thank you very much. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is to approve the purchase of new security cameras for the high school, Grant, and Madison. And Jerry, Anna, do you have some there, information? You know, uh, uh, it seems like each year we discover some areas that need additional security coverage. Um, um, probably a good example is uh, with Madison's new playground, uh, it would be good to have some additional coverage um, uh, there. The high school has identified some areas that they feel like they could uh, could stand some coverage, and so it, you know this is um, this is probably a good thing because as we as we identify these as we go along, um, we really find out what we need, as opposed to trying to do a blanket uh, uh, security camera as, as as we've done. So uh, this this again is just uh, this would come out of the uh, out of our Pepple money, uh, and um, and I, it would. Protect our, our, our physical plant and safety of our students. What are the wishes of the board? I'll make a motion to approve the purchase of the new security cameras for MHS Grant and Madison. Is there a second? I second that. It's been moved and seconded to approve the purchase of the new security cameras for the three locations of MHS, Grant, and Madison. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? And the motion carries. The next item on our agenda is for discussion and information. This falls under our board target of Muscatine Schools will utilize our resources effectively and equitably. This is a second reading on a large list of policies, so bear with me, I will read through these. Um, board members in your board packet, Lisa sent out a link that if you have specific questions or things that you want addressed, that you could um, put those comments in. Did we have anything this time around? I haven't checked lately. Okay, I'm gonna read through them while you check. How's that? So this is a second uh, reading. You will see, board members, you'll see these one more time before we make the final approval. So 701.1, planning the budget. 701.2, preparation of the budget document. 701.3, requirements of the budget document. 701.4, publication of the budget. 701.5, public review of the budget. 701.6, budget adoption by the board. 701.7, .7, budget as a spending plan. 701.8, transfer of inactive account funds. 701.9, financial accounting system. 702.1, local, state, and federal income. 702.3, educational materials fee deletion. 702.4, sale of bonds. 702.5, investments. 702.6, gifts, grants, and bequests. 702.8, special assessments, scheduled for deletion. 703.1, purchasing and bidding. 703.2, requisitions, purchase orders. 703.3, receiving goods and services. 703.4, approval and payment of goods and services. 703.7, bidding procedures for public improvements, recommended for deletion. 703.8, credit card use. 704.3, financial report, published. 704.4, annual financial statement, published, recommended for deletion. 
704.6 inventory, 704.7 intangible assets, deletion, 704.8 GASB45, 70, it seems easier to read the acronym, 705.2 personal records, which would move to the 400 series, 705.3 student records, deletion, 706.1 insurance program, 708.1 school food program, that's a new policy, 708.2 free or reduced cost meals eligibility, new policy, 708.3 vending machines, new policy, 709.1 student school transportation eligibility, new policy, 709.2 student transportation and extracurricular activities, new policy, 709.3 summer school program transportation service, new. Any, if you have any comments or questions on the second reading, if you would uh, forward those again to Lisa via the document that she has provided, that would be great. You will have an opportunity to see these one more time. Lisa, do we have any comments that we need? Um, just 705.2 personnel records. A comment was made about the term microfilming. Oh, yes, we talked about that last time. Right, yeah. and so with the new 401.15, or moving it to 401.15, I think and I took out the word, I uh, uh, took out the word microfilming and just put digitally, digitally recording or something to that effect to give it more of a, who knows what's going to happen in four years, right? Right, <laughs> right. So I think that comment was around um, uh, some of us recognized macrofish may or may not be a thing we use anymore and some of you are laughing so uh yeah <laughs> digital uh processing of some um, sort exactly. is beautiful all right well just to play stickler there if, we, if they're digital records the, the provision concerning burning or shredding may not be appropriate any longer either <laughs> it's true so i don't know what, what we should have but may need some advisement from isb on that i know they've been updating them i hear you can wipe things with bleach and <laughs> Yeah, and a sledgehammer. We'll take care of it. And no more. It's been done, right? All right, so are we good on the second reading? Like I said, you'll see those one more time. So this is the first reading of the next set of policies. And again, uh, to make sure that those that are at home, I'm going to read through this list that the board members have. You will see this, this same list two more times. So if you read through them again and you have questions that you didn't have the first time, that's okay. Again, um, utilizing the document that Lisa's created, we can submit all of those questions that we have. That list of first reading on policies is 401.15 personnel records, and it is, that is moving from a 700 series, a 705.3. 803, disposal of school equipment. 805, crisis management and response plan. 806.1, buildings and sites long range planning. That's a new policy. 806.2, building and site surveys, new. 806.3, educational specifications for building and sites, new. 806.4, site acquisition, new. 807.1, maintenance schedule, new. 807.2, request for improvements, new. 807.3, emergency repairs, new. 807.4, buildings and site adaptation for persons with disabilities, that's new. 807.5, vandalism, new. 807.6, energy conservation, new. 808, lease, sale, or disposal of school buildings and sites, new. 900.1, tobacco, nicotine-free environment, that's scheduled for deletion. 900.2, release to news media, internal unit, news. 900.5, visitation by students, adults, groups, or agencies to the school district. 900.10, news conferences and interviews, new. 900.11, live broadcast or videotaping, new. 900.13, advertising and promoting, new. That is our list of the reading on the first policies. Does anyone have any questions or concerns on that first reading of that lengthy list? All right. That takes us to our announcements. 
of upcoming events that we have. September 26th will be our annual progress breakfast that will be uh, will begin at 7:15 a.m. and that will be at the administration center at 2900 Mulberry. And our next regularly scheduled board meeting will be October 9th. We'll be meeting at 7 p.m. and we'll be back here in City Hall. There's also an ISB session uh, for new board members or all board members October 10th, 10th in Mount Pleasant. Yep. So and they're very good to go to. And there are a couple of us signed up, so if anybody is interested in going, if you will let Lisa know, she can sign you up and we can certainly do some carpooling if that's of interest. And there was another AA session that was October 4th, I believe, that you sent to us today. Up the in um, Bendor. banquet. Yeah, Speaking banquet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tom Downs. Mm -hmm. And Lisa, you need to know about that one sooner than later. Yes, by next Thursday. Oh, I was told. All right. By Monday. You should let Lisa know by Monday if you can attend the October 4th uh, AA session. Any other announcements? If not, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Again, I was a little worried there for just a minute. Is there a second? I'll second. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed? And the motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.